Hi moms and dads, it's the Yummy Mummy here. And today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about my two favorite goat formulas. Um, so right here I have Holly Goat, which is European, and I have Nanny Care, which is New Zealand. Um, now these are my two favorite goat formulas and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about why that is. Um, I'm gonna get into ingredients and farming, etc. So this is going to hopefully give you a lot of information to base your decision on, uh, you know, in, in regards to which formula you would, you would likely want to choose for your baby. So let's get started. <laughs> um, okay, so Hale is, uh, like I said, it's European. It is organic. Um, and Nanny Care is made in New Zealand and it is not organic. Now, don't let the fact that it's not organic fool you because... New Zealand actually has one of the highest uh, milk production standards in the world. So their farming in regards to milk is already super high quality. So they have to follow, you know, strict guidelines and regulations already. So I, I mean, for the most part, I think that uh, Nanny Care feels that their standards are already so high that they don't need to go above and beyond and get the certification for being organic. Um, Holly does certify organically. Um, usually Holly certifies with Demeter. Demeter is an external certification um, in Europe, which is, which is actually seen as one of the highest certifications you can get when it comes to organic gold standards. So um, that speaks volumes, really. Um, Europe already has great standards in place in regards to their um, food production, what you can and cannot include in uh, your foods as far as ingredients go. But um, Demeter is more of a, how can I put this? They certify their, um, th their products organically by treating the whole farm and production as a whole entity. So everything down to the soil is not treated with pesticides, herbicides. Uh, you know, any of those nasty sprays, um, and they treat the entire farm as as one. So it's really a great system that they have in place, and, and it makes us parents feel really confident when using their products because we know that it's of the highest quality. So, I, I mean, between these two, I'd probably say that the Holly Goat is probably the more popular one. It's the, it's the more well-known when it comes to goat formulas. Um, Nanny Care is, is up, uh, a little bit more up and coming. Um, we're starting to see it a little bit more now. Both are equally great. Um, Holly, Holly basically, they incorporate maltodextrin into their formulation. So it's about 50% lactose, 50% maltodextrin, um, and then they can include some starch in there as well. Nanny Care is 100% lactose. So usually when parents come to me and they have, you know, a baby with an upset tummy um, on cow milk or, or even goat formula, I'm, I'm looking at what is actually at play here. So is it a cow allergy or is it a cow milk protein allergy? So if it's a cow allergy and it has something to do with lactose, you're probably not going to have a whole lot of success with either one of these formulas because they both include lactose. If it's a cow milk protein allergy, you're actually going to achieve probably a lot of success with both of these. Aside from that, I mean, goat formulas differ from cow formulas. Um, they're, they're more, they're seen as more easily digestible. So what happens in the baby's stomach is when the, ga when the goat milk hits the tummy, it produces a lighter, softer curd, uh, which is more easily digestible. Um, and it's quicker to digest, it's more completely digestible. Now that's not to say that there's anything wrong with cow formulas. I mean, cow formulas were, I'm a huge supporter of European cow formulas. Um, but uh, as far as goat formulas go, this would be my top two choices. Um, like I said, they're both non-GMO, no antibiotics, no hormones, no sprays. Um, they are a little bit um, quicker to expire. So usually what will happen is, I, I always suggest to, to parents that when you open up the box, um, so you open up the box and you're gonna see that the box comes with a foil packet and a scoop. So what you wanna do is you wanna open this foil packet and you wanna pour it into a glass lock tight, airtight container. 
pour the entire amount in and put the glass lock lid on and just store it in your cabinet. That's gonna get you your maximum fresh, freshness out of the formula. So, I mean, with the Holly, I usually say it'll last you around two weeks. Um, could stretch that above two weeks. I always say, you know, make a book, when you first open the box, make a bottle of formula and taste it so that you can understand what the taste is like. And then around the two week mark, taste it again. You'll know if it goes off. Um, but again, these don't have the kind of preservatives that some of the North American formulas have. So you're not going to get the longevity out of that, um, out of them. So Nanicare does last a little bit longer. I mean, this is a 400 gram box and this is a 900 gram tin. Um, so you are going to get the uh, more longevity out of it. Um, I would say probably you can stretch it to... <sighs> four weeks but again um, try and try and I mean definitely taste it when you open it up um, and then taste it around that four over the three week mark uh, just to kind of be sure that uh, that it's still okay it's milk right it can go off uh, you don't necessarily need to pour this out I, I mean it comes in a tin with a nice airtight lid so I mean you don't you don't have to dump it into an airtight um, seal lock container to store it you can store it right in the tin you can if you want but I mean this is super easy because it's airtight anyways you, what you may find when importing the nanny care um, with the tins is that they they do get bashed around and they do dent easily so what you want to make sure is if I mean if you do receive from your supplier a dented tin it's pretty typical that that can happen but you want to make sure that it's not severely dented um, and if it if it does have some dents you want to shake it and make sure that there's no formula actually leaking out of of the tin um, so I, I mean you don't want any formula leaking out that means the seal is broken and the formula will, is spoiled so make sure you shake it the powder is so fine that you will notice you'll notice if there's a leak because there will be um, like a powder residue around either the box. Um, boxes can get dented to too. Um, that happens a lot as well. I mean, they're, they're paper, right? So they're, they can get bashed around quite a lot. Um, but just make sure, it, seeing as this has, the box has, the Holly Goat has the foil package, um, you're, pretty, you're pretty safe with uh, this being airtight. But again, like feel the packet and, and see if there's any formula residue on the outside because if there is, then it's likely been, been punctured. Same with this, just check. Um, and you know, if you, do, if you do notice that there's you know, powder residue around uh, the outside, or if you're shaking it and there is some falling out, then definitely contact your supplier and, and speak to them about it. So that, uh, that's pretty much it as far as you know, uh, the boxes go, other than the fact that you know, the Holly is in German. So you wanna make sure that if you don't read German, you understand what the ratio is to mixing and, and, the, and the procedure with mixing this is. So, I mean, generally across the board with uh, the European formulas, it's usually 30 milliliters to, to one scoop. I mean, it can be daunting. There's a lot involved. I mean, you gotta sterilize your equipment in your bottles. Um, you, you wanna be safe because you don't want any bacteria getting in there, especially with a newborn. Um, so, I mean, you want to make sure that you're, you're doing this right. Um, and, and there's not, a, unfortunately, there's not enough information out there on, on teaching parents, you know, the safeties and the, and the do's and don'ts on formula feeding. So that's what I'm here for. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, uh, again, go to my website if you need, the, and you can Google it as well. I mean, if you have the baby Brisa, you can probably Google those. Um, a lot of the information, these, you know, four years ago when I was formula feeding and when I was becoming, you know, privy to all of the European formulas, there was hardly any information out. So I'm, I'm glad that this is becoming more well known and talked about um, and, and, uh, and popular as well, because I mean, they really are the best of the best. So yes, just make sure that you're, you're, you're getting the right ratios. Um, the nanny care is in English, so you don't have a problem with that. You can, uh, I mean, if you read English, obviously you won't have a problem with that. Um, so these are straightforward. Um, and yeah, you want to you wanna make sure that, uh, again, uh, you're, just, you're just following um, the guidelines. Um, you know, 
how how many feeds per day, at, at what age they're at. You want to you want to make sure that you're get, you're getting the, the right intake into them. As far as making the formula goes, never I always. I mean, I can't tell you how many parents have come to me and said that uh, you know they're pouring the the scoop right into the boiled water, um, like boiling water as soon as they pour it into the into the bottle. Uh, don't do that. Please don't do that. Um, you're going to kill a lot of the nutrients. So always make sure that, I mean, this is, this is my method. You boil the water, you have your sterilized bottle and everything and your equipment all set up. Pour the boiling water from the kettle or the pot or whatever you're using. Pour the boiling water and the amount of water you need in that bottle and then let it put the cap on that comes with that bottle um, and, and set it on the counter aside and leave it there for about 10 minutes. That's gonna get you to around like 70 degrees um, temperature wise. And then you're gonna, after that 10 minutes, take the cap off and pour the scoop into the water. Put the, put the lid on, the nipple on, the lid and shake it. And that's gonna mix your formula up. Test it obviously on your wrist. You wanna make sure that you know the baby's not gonna get burned. Um, and, then, and then you're good to go. Pre-mixed bottles of formula I get asked all the time. So uh, how long will they keep? Um, you can make a bottle of formula and store it in your fridge for I say, you know, the standard is around 24 hours is it's is 24 hours. You don't want to keep a bottle longer a pre-mixed bottle of formula longer than 24 hours. Um, and you don't want to ever refeed a bottle. So if your baby does not finish the bottle of formula, you have to toss it. Um, it so, so it's better to, you know, maybe do, if, you, if you're a first time formula feeder and you're transitioning onto these formulas, do half and see how it goes. And then pour the other half into the bottle if, you know, if, if the baby's loving it. Um, so you, you never wanna refeed a, a previously fed bottle. Bacteria can get in and, and you don't want that to happen. Absolutely pre-make bottles, um, especially for those nighttime feeds. I mean, with newborns, we're up probably every two hours feeding them. So uh, make a pre-made bottle. Um, none of these come in ready to feed, uh, so you're gonna be mixing them. Uh, but again, 24 hours, I mean, the fresher the better. If you can toss that bottle after 12 hours, that's, that's probably um, the best bet there. Um, yeah, so I mean, the cow milk, naturally contains um, vitamins and minerals. Goat milk does too. Um, they naturally contain vitamins and, and minerals as well. Now what, what formula producers can do is they can add synthetic vitamins. Now not, that's not necessarily a bad thing because the goat milk um, naturally does not contain some vitamins that cow milk actually contains. So you may see some synthetic um, vitamins on the ingredients list. Uh, don't let that scare you. I mean, this is these are vitamins that are essential um, and just because they're synthetic doesn't mean that they're nasty or, or, or bad. Um, so, I mean, that is something that, you know, Holly and Nanny Care needs to do to kind of make sure that uh, the formula is providing the maximum amount of nutrition to a baby um, and mimicking breast milk. 50% maltodextrin, 50% lactose. Maltodextrin, I mean, some parents want to keep their formulas really clean, right? And they, and they look at the word maltodextrin and it, it, it has kind of that lab connotation with it, like it's created in a lab. This, they, they use the maltodextrin as the carbohydrate. So um, it, it's derived from non-GMO corn. Uh, and, and that is, I mean, whenever there's something in, in, a, in a food that we're eating, we want to make sure that it's non-GMO. I do anyways, and I, <laughs> I'd love it if everyone felt the same way as me, but um, we, want to, we want to keep it clean. We want to keep the sprays out, especially with newborn babies. I mean, come on, we don't want to be spraying with pesticides and herbicides and all that kind of stuff. So it's important that we understand that even if there is, you know, the maltodextrin and anything on the back of the box that you're reading that, you know, kind of has that lab connotation with it, Holly is making sure it's organic. So, I mean, the maltodextrin can get a bad rap, but, um, you know, some of the goat formulas, a lot of the goat formulas, European goat formulas or cow formulas have uh, maltodextrin in it. 
and um, you know it's it's not it's not necessarily a bad thing um, it can like I said it can get a bad rap but it's not necessarily a bad thing another thing is I mean when you're transitioning onto one of these formulas from like a North American brand or a cow milk European um, or North American their digestive systems are so immature that I mean anytime you change something in their diet they're going to get a little bit um, plugged up so even when you're starting solids uh, you know constipation will happen so it takes two weeks to adjust to a new formula remember that um, it's uh, it, it really is you got to give it a two week a two week um, adjustment period now obviously if the baby's um, you know not taking to the formula whatsoever like screaming when they're drinking it in pain or you know has a reaction like a rash or or excessive spit ups stuff like that obviously you want to you want to change you think about changing the formula because it's not it's not reacting well with your little one so that would be um you know those would be some signs that that you do want to transition onto something else um but i mean I don't, to be honest, I, I've recommended goat formula to hundreds of parents um, just because of that, of that one thing that can come into play quite often and that is the cow milk protein allergy. Um, and also, I mean, babies with just sensitive tummies uh, that, you know, they, they just need something that's a little easier to digest. This is a great option. Um, and, and like I said, it, it, it is, it is very close to breast milk. So, I mean, if you're looking at, uh, introducing a goat formula and you're transitioning off of another one, I always recommend a slow transition as well. So, I mean, introduce one bottle for the first day and then two bottles the second day and then three bottles the third and so on and so on. So that is going to, um, relieve or possibly eliminate the constipation uh, if you do a you know cold turkey approach and cut them off their formula that they're currently on and then just move right on to the next uh, you're gonna see that they will get constipated so that's that's it <laughs> that's all um, I hope that I answered all of your your kind of questions in regards to, to goat formulas I hope that I was able to Kind of give you some clarity on that um i mean every baby's different so please remember that just because your sister fed uh her baby you know holly goat or whatever formula it does not mean that your baby is going to be successful with it so you've really got to kind of um think about what it is that you're looking for in a formula what you feel you want to feed your baby and then and then kind of assess what your baby needs as well um, your baby's diet, your baby's digestion. I mean, there's a lot that come into play. So that's why I do formula consultations because I can provide you with a lot of information that, uh, that will be helpful when selecting a formula for your little one. Um, so yeah, I mean, once again, you, you want to, you, it's really going to be, um, sometimes it can be process of, of elimination, you know, in a diet to determine what a, what a sensitivity is, etc. Um, if your baby is experiencing an upset tummy um, and and obviously you know you want to be sensitive to the fact that uh, and aware of um, you know ingredients and uh, and um, processing and you know uh, listen I <laughs> I've had babies come to me that are just um, screaming in pain rashes all over them I can't digest the formulas that they're on and honestly I've put them on the European formulas um, or the holly goat and the nanny care and it's like instant almost for, I mean I can't tell you how many babies that it's been pretty much instant with an instant difference I get messages all the time I have a new baby I can't believe it like it, this is incredible like it's it's literally a lifesaver and I mean as a new mom with a scream screaming newborn and and you know a baby that's not digesting food I mean it's it's so much stress I, I know trust me I, I've been there um, so contact me if you have any questions um, comment uh, you know reach out I'm the yummy mummy um, and I I've been doing formula consultations for four years now
uh, most all on European formulas, uh, goat formula and cow and New Zealand formula as well. Um, so yeah, contact me, let me know uh, what, uh, what's going on with, with your babe, okay? Uh, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.